Hello everyone, it's great to be here. Um, and yeah, as the title suggests, like create a game in 25 minutes, kind of, like with, um, with a lot of like kind of exceptions and like saying, oh yeah, this is kind of done, but this is not really done, stuff like that, but we'll go into that. So, and also like the, the, the thing, it's not just creating a game in 25 minutes, it's also like a React powered game and React as in itself is usually not known for game development. Um, so yeah, a couple of things that's, that are going to be very interesting during the course of this talk. So, but before we go into all that, let me introduce myself. So, I'm Johannes, um, and I'm originally like from the Munich area, like Augsburg, if, if people are familiar with that. And right now, I live in London actually, and it's, it's like, very interesting because um, in London people really have a hard time pronouncing my name and they just call me Joe instead of Johannes. So it's really great to be back here and actually um, people call me by my name and can actually pronounce it. <laughs> so um, on the internet I'm at Frostney but on Twitter there's actually like an underscore at the end because the name was already taken. So sorry if if that causes confusion. Um, so by trade, I'm a web developer with some mobile thingies, and I also, like, what I really like to do is actually, in my free time, in my spare time, I like to create games, like, those range from, like, year-long projects up to uh, just, like, a couple of game jams, like 24-hour game jams or 80, uh, 48 hour game jams. Like, those are really great in my opinion because um, they give you an idea and like a set amount of time you need to finish a goal or you, you're able to experiment um, with, a, with a specific constraint which is usually the time and the theme and then you, you get to experiment with that. Um, and the game jam, for those of you who are not super familiar with the term, is pretty much a hackathon, but um, instead of creating like an app or something like that, you create a game instead. So that's what I like to do in my free time. Also, like, this is gonna be super interesting. Like, I really love live coding, because it's like, it's super interesting in the way that either, like, if I make a mistake um, or something like that during my live coding session, like, everyone, um, is like a backseat driver and can say, oh yeah, you forgot like a semicolon or a comma or whatever. And um, it's, if it's not fun for me in terms of like debugging through it, it's always fun for the, for the audience, I feel like. So yeah, uh, let's, let's get back into what we're gonna be doing today. Or, well, not today, but like throughout the rest of, the, of this talk. Um, just, just a disclaimer right here. It's not gonna be a full-fledged game, like, at all. Like, don't expect that. Um, so what we're, what we're gonna be doing instead is I'm gonna go through some things that you would usually do when developing a game, like, um, like a couple of things you're usually introduced by, or a couple of problems that you are usually introduced by when um, developing a game in a very short amount of time. And I'm gonna show how those can be achieved with React and how this is actually maybe a bit quicker than like your usual ways. I'm, I'm controversial now, <laughs> so don't, 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 don't kill me yet. Um, so, and of course, um, there, there will be rough edges, like the, um, definitely through the time constraint there's not gonna be like a whole lot of time to, to polish everything through and like to uh, account for all of the edge cases when developing a game. So let's, let's go into the problems that I mentioned like in the previous slide. So what we're gonna be doing, for example, is we're gonna be moving some stuff around on the screen and we're also like kind of going into like different things that you usually are being introduced by like updating something on the screen every frame and may, like how to 
um, do animations maybe if the time permits, and those kinds of things. So, obvious question of course, like why use React? Uh, because there are like many game frameworks out there and many who are probably better suited um, than React itself. Um, so, the thing is, for me personally, I've been doing React uh, for like two years now, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm biased here, like I'm super biased. But for me, developing with React is like way quicker than using anything else. So, and with this thing is that you should use what you're most familiar with. So for me, that's React, and so pretty much everything that I develop in my work time and in my spare time is usually done with React, because it, that's just what I'm most familiar with. And um, like when I was doing jQuery like eons ago, um, all of my games that I developed in my spare time used jQuery, which I usually don't admit in public, but it's fine. <laughs> so some of you might not be super familiar with React, so I'm going through just some of the, the core things. Like, one concept in React is that everything is a component. And this looks like this, for example. So, um, we're trying to build a character. Uh, or like, so, this character usually has a head, he has arms, he has legs, and those kinds of things. So, in React, every one of those things would be a component. And, um, for example, let's say, we want to be able to display different things um, depending on what we put in. Like say, we want the arms to either wave or not. Then we would say, okay, we're defining um, waving as a, as a parameter, which is gonna be destructed. Um, so then we can, depending on what we put into the component, um, we can display different things here. And another thing is that people who are not super used to React is probably like the first big hurdle when they see any React code, and that is JSX. So when we declare components like this character that we're doing, we're saying, okay, there's a head, there's a torso, there's an arms and legs, but hey, wait, this doesn't look like JavaScript, this looks like more like XML. Yeah, this is kind of JSX. And um, so when we want the arms to be moving for, uh, sorry, the arms to be waving, then we just say, okay, let's put in waving next to arms, and then it will be passed down to the component. So um, there's a funny story actually here. So when I was doing um, game development, uh, with native languages such as C++ or um, other kind of things, then I usually had like an XML file, which was eerily similar to this one, where I had like my kind of game objects built and like built through different um, components. Uh, and then an XML parser then just took all of those tiny bits and made a visual representation out of that. So I feel in that way, actually, React is, is very similar to game development. Um, so, oh yeah, let, let's actually get to coding, right? Um, so I said 20 minutes ago, but I've been actually talking way more, so it's more like 16 minutes, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, let's do some code. Um, Oh, I actually totally forgot what kind of game we're gonna make today. So um, it's actually gonna be like like a kind of pirate game. Let me just get some code on the screen. So um, so what we're gonna be displaying today is like two kind of ships, and they're gonna be moving around, and then maybe shoot cannonballs and stuff like that. And it's it's gonna it's so, now it actually sounds more amazing that it's gonna be in the end, but just going to hype you up for that. Um, so yeah, um, first we have like a game component. And then we put in a background, which is water. Then we put in the first ship. 
uh, if I can type actually, and we put it in right here. Okay, first ship in. <laughs> then we put in the second ship. Uh, probably, at, well, some are different. They shouldn't overlap because overlapping is kind of bad. Right. Hold on. Double wise, that's not good. That's, that's why I love I, uh, live coding. Uh, so, yeah. Um, then, so now I'm actually doing something uh, interesting here. So we have two ships on the screen, both are the same. But we kind of want one to be like the bad guy and one to be us. So we're gonna say, putting in like a black flag, and now the second ship is like a bad pirate ship and we are like the good guys and trying to destroy this pirate ship and so on. Um, okay, so yeah, this is like the, the kind of like the starting point for, for our game. Um, there's some matching going on, which I'm gonna explain uh, right now. But first, like, just look at, um, look at this for a moment. Um, so we have this background, which is the water, and then we have like a first ship, um, and then the se second ship, and as a children element of the second ship to denote it's, a, it's like a, something different else, uh, sorry, something else, we are just putting in like a modifier to say um, this is going to be a pirate ship. So, magic explain, explanations time. Um, so this game um, component that we've seen so far, it actually consists of more things. So in there is a loop, a stage, and a world. So let me quickly explain that. So the loop is a game loop that is happening, so uh, that, that we can subscribe to pretty much. Like if we want stuff to be done, like every frame, we can um, subscribe to that and then update it. Like the stage uh, is handling a viewport. So let's say we say our initial game is gonna be like uh, 800 pixels by 600 pixels, but if we resize our window, it shouldn't like go outside of the bounds of the screen, but it should resize with it. So that's what stage is doing. And world is pretty much like a physics world. So I can actually, I could show you how well the viewport resizing is working, but it would mean that I need to resize my browser and the slides would actually not handle that, so I'm sorry about that. But the slides will be online later, so you can, um, you can check that out for yourself. Okay, so now we got stuff on our screen um, and we want our ship to be moving. So let's put in a key event. So, oh yeah, this key event wants a function. All right. So, and then here we are going to say, as a parameter, it's like the, the buttons that we are pressing down and the state. Okay, so first thing, we're going to check, like for the for the S button, like key code, index of, key S, like, and if it's there, we're gonna return, uh, return like the, the Y position, like an updated Y position for the ship. And the initial position we're getting from the state. Oh, no, it has to be plus, actually. All right, let's check this out. Yeah, and hold on. It, it kind of moved, right? Everyone saw that? It's made, moved? <laughs> All right. Um, let's try this again. <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh, yeah. Of course, not a... I can actually press the correct key. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm s no, no, that's not it. 
All right, I think I got it now. Okay. Let's, let's try to move it again. This time, oh yeah, it's moving. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> right. So now we can actually pretty much copy paste it for every other key. Um, I guess let's do the W key. And I'm actually ri running super out of time, so uh, we probably need to be quicker with my copy pasting. Uh, right, so it's moving a bit, and then also like the, the other axis, uh, A. And right, A and D, and hold on. Yeah, yeah, this is good, this is good, it's moving. Maybe, maybe not fast enough, but it's moving, it's moving. Let's make it faster. S sorry, I, I, I'm super nitpicky about those things, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's moving faster. So um, what we saw here, though, like um, it's just now moving like either horizontally or vertically, but it would be great if it would be like also be moving diagonally. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to say we're going to define as like a movement object. And then Instead of returning directly, we're just going to modify this object. Movement, all right. And there you go. No syntax errors, please. Forgot an E, of course I did. And there we go, almost done. And then we're just gonna return some movement. Right. Right, diagonally, yay! Okay, it's amazing. Uh, Feel free to, to, to clap, though, if you want to. Um, so, yeah, uh, magic explanation time again. So, we, we saw before that we're saying, like, inside of the children, we're putting in um, components, but they're actually not visible components, but they're just modifiers for the for the parent component. So that's actually pretty easy to do in React. We're just saying, okay, like, iterate through all of the children, and if it's like the thing that we want, like in this case, our key event, um, it modifies our parent component in a way. So th this is what we're doing for the key handler, for the black flag that I showed earlier. And yeah, it's probably not something you want to be doing um, in a web app, but it's pretty neat for games because it allows you to logically structure your components better. Okay, next thing. Sprite sheets. Uh, I found an explanation on the internet that says a sprite sheet is an image contains larger, smaller graphics in a tight word arrangement, and it looks something like that. So what we want to do when we're moving our ship, instead of just moving it around, we want it to go in a di uh, specific direction. Let's say so. If you're saying, if you're pressing the W key, it should take the image that with the ship going upward and those kinds of things. You know, I'm talking faster because I'm running horribly out of time. <laughs> so I I'm I'm sorry for that. Um, so to actually update the ship. Uh, I put something in that I called like a direction index, which, which automatically pulls in the correct, um, the, the correct image. So if I put in three, it will display like to the, the top right. If I put in four, it will be in the upwards position. 
those kinds of things. So what we just need to do here, we just need to say, okay, if I'm pressing the button, then instead of, we, we're gonna rename this to, instead of movement, say new state, because this is more obvious than, than before. Refactoring for the win. Um, and then we're just gonna say new state direction index, and then for the W key, it's four because that's what it is right now on the screen. And, uh, well, let's just do W <laughs> for now, for now, be because time, time is running out. Uh, okay, and then it displays the, the ship in the upward position. And I'm just gonna put in random other things in, um, just to test them. But they would probably not work correctly because I don't know the correct indices from the top of my head. Um, all right, yeah, it's kind of working. Good enough, good enough. Um, okay. So um, this is the last thing that I'm gonna explain in a bit more detail before just going through the rest of the slides super quickly. Um, so what we wanna do here, we just, like this pirate ship, um, we just wanna put in like on a patrol, like on a kind of pass maybe, well not a pass, like just moving from the left to right and then from the right to the left again. And there's a, there's a thing called uh, on update, which allows us to uh, go ahead and update the state of the component uh, on every frame if we so desire. So if I do this, for example, um, like I'm putting in the state and then I'm returning Uh, returning an updated position for the x coordinate. Let's say state x plus four. Then you see it's moving like around. And if we're gonna do that correctly, then it looks like this. Yay! Um, <laughs> so, like in code for this is like pre pretty, um, pretty verbose right now, but pretty much what it does is um, it defines two positions and then if it reaches one, then there's like a, a, a few flags around that um, switches over to going to the left-hand side and then to the right-hand side. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna skip through most of the slides now um, unfortunately. So I just want to show you one thing on this one, for example, you could actually shoot the cannon and then like a little ball would show up. Um, and it's, it's really nice. I, I really like this animation, <laughs> even though it's like super simple. Um, uh, and then we have to skip through the things. But imagine it's a finished game now. <laughs> or kind of. Um, well, still, uh, even if we were able to go through all of the examples, um, there's still a lot of things that need to be figured out. Like, for example, um, we like the collision detection, like putting in the physics and stuff like that. Um, also, like there are a lot of edge cases, and for example, like like also those all of those tiny details, like um, the cannonball shooting. Right now, it's just shooting up, but um, the actual cannons are like on either side of the ship, so it probably should be like two cannonballs shooting like from the left and the right. Um, yeah, um, so what did I do that with? And there's a library out there called React Game Kit, um, which you can check out and then like I did, uh, I put like some co components of to on top of it and it's really great to, to work with. Um, and like this is the, the the library author. This is Ken Wheeler, 
and that was him trying to convince me to use React AIMKit uh, for the slides. Uh, no, just kidding. I, I used it on, on my own uh, for you all. Um, but uh, shout out to Camila, though, because like, I originally had like, a physics example in here, um, and I couldn't get it to work. And then Camila tried to debug it with me like hours before the presentation, but it still didn't work. All right, and I am out of time. Thank you so much. Oh, no,